I've shot ProRes RAW on the Sony a7S III before and the footage looks fantastic. But now that I own the Sony FX3, I wanted to take this camera out and really push ProRes RAW and see just how good it could look and how much dynamic range I could get out of this camera. I also wanted to correct a few mistakes that I made last time when editing 16-bit HDR footage. So let's get into it. Now, before we look at this footage, let's talk about the camera rig and settings I used to capture it all. Everything was shot on the Sony FX3 with the 16 to 35 G Master lens at f2.8. And all the footage was recorded externally to my Atomos Ninja V in ProRes RAW at 4.2K resolution. And I shot it all in 60 frames per second because it was completely handheld. So I wanted to be able to slow it down to 24 frames per second in my timeline to kind of smooth out the footage. Now the picture profile that I used is S-Log3 s gamut 3cine Everything was shot with a base ISO of 640 and I kept the 180 degree shutter roll. Now in order to keep that, the only thing I could adjust was my ND filter because I was shooting at f2.8 and I didn't want to stop down at all. So the whole time I had the Polar Pro Basecamp matte box on the front of my lens. I absolutely love this. It's my favorite one out there. I've talked about it a lot on the channel, but it has this little VND that you can spin to of course, change your exposure. And I did it all with the two to five stop version. They do make a darker one, but I found that this worked fantastic for shooting at f2.8, even out in bright sunny conditions. Now let's look at the footage. Everything was shot in Park City, Utah during the peak of fall season. So all the leaves were changing colors and it just looks absolutely incredible. All right, let's check it out.
Hopefully you guys got something out of all that B-roll footage. I know for me, I like to watch test footage out in the real world. I find it to be really helpful and educational. It lets me know just how good something is or isn't, but I don't know. Do you guys like to see B-roll? Let me know in the comments below. I try to put as much of it in my videos as I can. I can't do it in every video and every rig build, but I really try to do it for you guys. I don't wanna be just a dude in his you know, office talking about camera gear, but never going out and showing you what I can capture and how it actually works. Now, when I was out shooting, I wanted to make sure I got the most amount of dynamic range out of this camera as possible. So in order to do that, you need to have a good external monitor that has nice tools built into it, like false color and waveform, and the ability to use LUTs or looks and things like that. So like I already mentioned, I was using the Atomos Ninja V, which I swear is my favorite. It's perfect for this. So the first thing that you need to know is when you're shooting in ProRes RAW, it's going to look very flat. So let me see if I can show you guys this. I'm gonna get close to the camera. When you're shooting in ProRes RAW, everything naturally looks very flat. And you can see that here when you go over and you tap on monitor and you're in native mode, everything looks flat. So that's not gonna give you the best idea of what your actual exposure and final image is gonna look like. So you could tap on Rec. 709, but as you can see, everything just blew out. It looks terrible. And that's because you're filming in 16-bit HDR. So when you go into Rec. 709, it's only 8-bit. It just looks horrible. You cannot do that. So you could do HLG. A lot of people prefer that. If you're going to deliver an HLG, then you know monitor an HLG. What I chose to monitor in actually was PQ, which is Rec 2020 PQ, which can be used for HDR. And I found it to be the most accurate and easy to work with when actually out shooting and in post-production. Now you could choose a LUT, but what I found with my LUTs is that they're all Rec 709 LUTs. So they ended up blowing out and not looking very accurate themselves. Make sure that you go and of course check all your tools. So I turn on my false color and I can see here that nothing's blowing out. My sky's starting to get a little yellow and orange but nothing's blowing out completely to white and losing data. Otherwise it'd be showing in a bright red. And you can also, of course, use your zebras. I just turned it on and nothing is really zebraing. So that means I'm retaining all the information that I want to. Now you know how I shot and monitored all the footage. Let's take a look at post-production and actually editing the 16-bit HDR footage. And we'll talk about whether or not you should export and deliver it in HDR or SDR. And we're gonna be doing all of it in Final Cut Pro because it's my favorite, but you can of course do this in any editor like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let's dive in. So we're gonna start from the top by opening a new project and we're just gonna call this ProRes Raw. And then you wanna make sure that it's in 4K I'm making a 23.98 timeline because I'm gonna slow down all my 60 frames per second footage. And then you can choose any flavor of ProRes, uh, but I'm gonna choose ProRes 422 and then hit OK. Now in the upper right hand corner here, you can see that my project is set to Rec. 709. And you may be wondering why the heck are you using Rec. 709 when you have 16 bit HDR footage? Well, let's talk about that. So if you're going to export and deliver in HDR, then definitely edit your footage in HDR. But a lot of people don't have HDR displays, so they can't actually view the footage and it's gonna look funny on a normal SDR or standard dynamic range display. Now, a lot of things like iPhones and things like that are coming in HDR and many you know, modern TVs and things are starting to do HDR, but not every device. And this is actually a mistake that I made in the past in my last video on Pro is Raw on the A7S III, I edited everything in HDR and I kind of actually messed up the color grade so things weren't bright enough up to 1000 nit brightness. So a lot of the footage looked kind of dim and just didn't look right. So I actually went back and did a re-edit on it and fixed it. But even still, a lot of people are saying it didn't look right because they were viewing that HDR footage on an SDR display. Now, when you upload it to YouTube, YouTube tries to color correct it and you know change the luminance values to take HDR and make it fit into SDR. But it's doing that all based on an algorithm and it just doesn't look correct. But luckily, we're gonna be able to retain a lot of that 16-bit high dynamic range information still in SDR, and I'm gonna show you how right now. We 
when you first pull your Pro is Raw footage into Rec. 709, it's going to look terrible. It's going to look very blown out like you see here on the screen. The sky is completely white. Everything looks horrible. The color is all totally off. And that's just how it's going to look. And that's just what happens by default in Final Cut. And you may be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like my footage was so beautiful. What happened? And it may freak you out. From this drop down, you can actually add different settings here by clicking on edit metadata view. It'll give you this huge list where you can check off different things that you want. So the first thing that you're really gonna want is the raw to log conversion. So I'm gonna scroll down to that. And I've already got it checked on. And then we want to go to a few other camera settings here. So we're gonna scroll up to camera LUT first. So make sure that's turned on so you can easily add a LUT. Camera ISO, because you can change your ISO with ProRes RAW, you can change it in post-production. And then I wanna see other things like my camera temperature. Although you can't change the white balance in post, yet with the Sony FX3, there are other cameras that allow you to change the white balance in ProRes RAW, so make sure that's clicked on and then hit OK. And what you wanna do is actually select all of your clips first in the browser. So I'm gonna select everything that I shot in ProRes RAW, and then I'm gonna do the RAW to log conversion. So right now it's set to none, and I'm actually going to set it to Sony S-Log3 S-Gamut3.Cine because that's what I shot everything in on the camera for my picture profile. So now you see everything looks really flat, but my dynamic range has come back. So the sky is not completely blown out anymore. Everything is looking really good, but looking very flat. Now you could right off the bat add a camera LUT if you wanted to, but I found that the camera LUTs again that I have completely blow things out still because it makes it Rec. 709. So that just blew out my sky. Even though I had good dynamic range, it ruined that. So I'm not gonna add a camera LUT. I'm going to actually color grade everything completely manually. But if you had LUTs that worked properly with HDR footage, you could load them up here quickly and do it to all of your footage in a batch and make it look pretty good right off the bat. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this for every single clip, but I'm gonna show you just really quickly how I work with ProRes RAW footage in SDR and color correct it and everything. So I'm gonna drag this clip onto the timeline and you can see there's a lot of information here in the sky, everything is looking good, nothing's really blown out. But I'm gonna bring up my um, color correction here and then I'm also from the view drop down I'm going to show my video scopes and let me drag this out to be just a little bit bigger and I love working with the Luma waveform it's seriously gonna be your best friend when it comes to getting things exposed properly and not like overexposing or blowing anything out so I can see my IRE values here for SDR are gonna be between 100 down to zero. If I was working in HDR, it would be from zero to 1000 nits brightness. So you just wanna stay within those parameters. So because this video is gonna be posted on YouTube and online, I want everyone to get the best possible viewing experience. And for that, it just needs to be in SDR. So you don't blow anything out when you are editing in HDR. But for us today, shooting in SDR, it's between zero and 100. So we wanna add contrast back in to the image and make everything look more normal. So on the exposure tab, I'm just gonna drag this down until those bottom peaks hit about zero. I want the blacks to become true black and kind of crush them down to a zero IRE. Now that I have that there, I'm gonna take my highlights and I wanna bring them up to almost 100 right before clipping. So that way I get the most amount of brightness there. So playing this back, it looks like the exposure here for her face is laying somewhere around 50 to 75 IRE. And if you wanna know exactly where it lies, you can go down to the bottom right here in effects, type in mask, and we can do a quick shape mask, drag it onto the footage. And then I'm actually going to change the shape of it here. So in the inspector, I'm going to just change the um, radius, make this a circle, bring it down a lot in size. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag this right over her skin. So it's just exposing a spot kind of on her cheek. Okay, and then in my waveform, I can see that the IRE is about 50 IRE. Now for skin tones, for um, a fair complexion like this, 
being somewhere between 50 to 70 IRE is probably good. So um, this isn't bad. I could definitely brighten it up a little bit if we wanted to, but that's how you can tell exactly where the IRE or exposure value is of someone's skin. Just make a quick mask. Um, I'm going to crush the blacks just a little bit more, bring them down so it's looking just a little bit more contrasty. We are gonna lose a little bit of information here, kind of in the armpit here of the jackets, but that's okay. I just wanna bring back some more contrast. Now, things still aren't super saturated, so I'll just go to the saturation tab. And of course, you could turn this up, you know, as much as you want to. Um, going too high, of course, your skin tones are gonna to look a little bit funny. You could use masks. I'm not gonna get really deep into color grading here, but you could use a mask and make this all super saturated and her less saturated. Uh, in fact, I might do that really quick just to show you, um, you know, just kind of for kicks and giggles. But the quickest way to do that is actually using Color Finale Pro. And I love Color Finale, I've shown it before. So in the effects, I'm going to search for Color Finale Pro and then I'm gonna drag it onto this clip. And then in the inspector, I'm actually going to click on edit layers. And now what we're gonna do is add a color wheel and I'm going to add a mask. So click on mask here and then click on mask again to show the mask. And now we'll quickly just do a circle mask and I'm going to drag it on here. And kind of get it to about the shape of her face, kind of bring it down the neck a little bit. And let's go ahead and feather it a bit. So down here, I'm gonna do a 50% feather so it's not really a um, harsh, it has a nice soft fall off. We want to actually affect just the outside area here. So in the settings here on the mask, I'm gonna click on this ellipse and then I'm going to click inverted. So that way it's affecting everything on the outside and any adjustments will not affect her skin tones. So let's click back on the mask and then now let's just do an overall saturation adjustment here with this slider on the right. So I could bring this all the way up to 100%. Now look at that super bright, poppy, very colorful. And it actually looks really true to eye. I mean, when we were there, the colors were just insanely bright, beautiful and saturated. So this actually looks pretty correct and her skin tones look good. They don't look crazy oversaturated. So just watch if I turn this on and off with the eyeball here you can see how much more bright and beautiful it becomes, but her skin tones remain the same. So this looks pretty good. Let's watch that back here. So because I have camera movement here, if you wanted to, you could move the mask and keyframe the whole thing. I'm not gonna do it for this example, but you could drag along and then move the mask and create a new keyframe by clicking down here, add keyframe. And then, you know, you would just continue along and you could do this frame by frame, depending on how much movement there is, you know, and move the mask and then add another key frame. Again, I'm not going to go crazy into color grading in this, but hopefully there's some helpful tips in there. I just love Color Finale Pro. You guys should definitely check it out. I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested. Let's pull up another example here. Here's just kind of a landscape. And I tried to do everything when I was out shooting out in the middle of bright daylight. Most everything I shot was like from 10 a.m. to like three or 4 p.m. So it definitely wasn't sunset or golden hour. A lot of it was shot really at high noon. And then I tried to have my subjects in shade and then really bright backgrounds and skies. So that way I could show how much dynamic range this camera can capture. I really tried to put it in the toughest lighting conditions possible. So with this clip here, we have a lot of shade here with the trees and then a very bright background. So I'm going to again, crush my shadows here, get them down to about zero IRE. And then I'm going to raise my highlights until they're about hitting 100. Now, if you go past that, you see it just completely blows out, looks terrible. So keep an eye on your IRE and make sure you're not letting anything blow out past 100. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to add some saturation. And because there's no one in the scene here, I'm just gonna throw it up to 100%. And honestly, like I said, being there, it really did look this bright, colorful, and beautiful. Honestly, I think I might even crush this down just a little bit more, give us a little bit more contrast in the image. Of course, you can color grade it however you want, but I think that this looks pretty nice and I didn't use any LUTs. Everything was shot in ProRes RAW and 
this is definitely a usable shot. Okay, I realized that the color grading portion of this is going a little deeper than I thought it was going to, but I do wanna show you just a couple other cool features when you're working with footage like this, because you really wanna get the most out of your ProRes RAW. And there's a really cool tool built into Color Finale Pro, so I'm just gonna drag that on and it actually allows you to see false colors. So in the inspector, you can scroll down to image analysis, click on show, and then click on false color. And this will give you, you know, a false color chart that you might be used to and something you would see when you're actually monitoring your footage out in the field. I also wanna show you how quickly you can edit this footage using the color management tools here in Color Finale. We can quickly add in some contrast and you can see how on the left here, my IRE is going up and it's also crushing it down. So I'm just gonna add just a ton of contrast here, maybe 65. And then I'm going to adjust my pivot here to crush the exposure back down a little bit. Let's go ahead and add some saturation, make this really bright and colorful. I mean, even at two, it looks pretty good. Just from these tools built right into Color Finale Pro here, you can get a pretty good looking clip without ever opening the color board or anything in Final Cut. Now, I also wanna show you how with ProRes RAW, you can adjust your ISO after the fact. And to find that in Final Cut, from the drop down here where it says General, you can go to Settings, and then here I can see my camera ISO. And I shot this in 640 ISO, but I can of course change it to any ISO that the camera offers. So if I thought this was too dark, I can bump it up to 1600 ISO. And obviously that's too bright. I actually shot this at you know, a good exposure, but if I wanted to darken it down, I could do 250 or whatever it is. I'm gonna set it back to 640, which is where I had it. But it's very cool that you do have that ability to change your ISO later on after the fact with ProRes RAW. Now, honestly, I could do like a full deep dive into working with HDR, editing it and delivering it because it is the future. So I've been trying to study up on it and practice working with it as much as I can. But for today's video, I feel like it's already running long, so I'm not gonna do that. But I do wanna finally show you how to properly export this footage. So you don't wanna go to all this work getting nice 16-bit HDR footage and then exporting it completely wrong and looking at it and being like, oh my gosh, where did my sky go? It's all blown out and everything like that. You could make that mistake. So quickly wanna show you how to do it. So just go up to File, Share, and then I'm going to do Master File and then click on settings. And here is where you could accidentally make a mistake. So my color space is standard Rec. 709 and I have the format set to computer. But if you do that, it's actually going to export everything in 8-bit. So you're going to lose information. You don't wanna do that. You want to make sure you're exporting everything still in ProRes. So I'm going to go to video and audio and then you can choose your you know, video codec, how good of ProRes do you wanna choose, you know, which flavor. And for our case here, I'm just gonna choose ProRes 422 because it's a good standard. But if you want it to be the highest quality possible, you know, you're gonna choose HQ. Those are the settings that you wanna to use to maintain that information. Make sure you're exporting in ProRes and then of course hit next and choose where you're gonna save it and go ahead and export. So now I've been shooting with the Sony FX3 externally to the Atomos Ninja V in ProRes RAW for a while. And I've just been so incredibly impressed with it. The dynamic range that this camera can capture is just gorgeous. And it's very easy to work with this footage in Final Cut Pro, full ProRes RAW, and actually all in an SDR timeline and then exporting an SDR. And it still looks great. You still have so much dynamic range and it's gonna look great on every display.